Good evening, everyone. Shalom. Uh, one second here. All right, good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, I welcome everyone to our fourth outside the rails session. This time we are joined by MLA, Tris uh, Altas, the Green uh, Health and Wellness uh, Critic, who will be sharing the bill she is preparing to improve the way our healthcare system is governed on PEI. <coughs> uh, this session will be uh, uh, will be uh, follow follow as uh, first the uh, fish will uh, tell us about her bill and why she has decided to make this uh, priority. Uh, then uh, secondly, uh, we will open the floor for our questions and questions to ensure that everyone understands what Trish uh, proposing and uh, and then after that, thirdly, we'll open the floor for general discussion and feedback on the bill as well as uh, your suggestions for improve the way our healthcare system is managed on PEI. Uh, if you uh, to get on the speaker list, uh, please use the raised hand feature on Zoom. Uh, it will be uh, exactly uh, if you ch uh, check it out, uh, uh, on there, there will be uh, reactions. There is a tab called reactions below. You just have to click there and it will show you the raised hand option. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, also you can, if you have any questions uh, and if you want to type on your other uh, uh, comments, uh, there is a chat box. Um, as I see, there is already a message over there, so you can see that it pops up. So you can uh, write your question on the uh, chat box as well. So that will be uh, uh, there as well, so we can check that out and then answer your questions as well. And um, I also want to uh, Note that uh, Maria Rodriguez uh, ha has volunteered to help take notes in this chat today in order to capture ideas and suggestions from participants. Uh, so I will now turn over this to uh, Trish to uh, get us started. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, and thank you so much, Chris, for, for that uh, introduction and for, you know, for getting this started tonight. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Jordan, for organizing and Maria for your help as well. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for the glare on my glasses. I don't usually do the Zoom meetings at night, so I'm trying to reposition myself so that it's not there. But, you know, it's, it's me, even if I'm hiding behind a glared glasses and you can't see my eyes. Um, it's no, it's book. okay. It's not a real mess. It's not too bad. Okay, great. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to have this conversation tonight. Um, there was a lot of uh, a lot of thought and work has gone into, um, you know, deciding to move forward uh, with the amendments to the Health Services Act. Um, essentially, what uh, what I'm proposing. Uh, and what's in this, this draft, uh, consultation draft, is a repealing of some changes that were made um, in 2018 that uh, shifted uh, some powers away from the Health PEI board to the minister. Uh, so in many ways, it, it changed the function of the board um, from a board that was able to, to make decisions and, um, and to be able to, to follow them through uh, to more of an advisory committee um, uh, allowing the minister to step in at any point 
um, and and uh, and make any changes that the minister might uh, feel was advisable. Um, uh, those changes may not be necessarily based on evidence. And uh, the concern is that allowing the minister to have um, absolute power uh, at, at each stage of, of the process, uh, particularly in the uh, uh, implementation of the operational plan, um, really opens the door for uh, political interference uh, in uh, making the best decisions for our healthcare system and for the, the health outcomes of Islanders. So, you know, one of our core principles uh, as a Green Party is uh, good governance. And really, you know, that really comes down to, you know, how um, decisions are made, the process of decision making, and, um, you know, how those decisions are implemented. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are, uh, our processes allow for the best outcomes uh, for our society and for everyone, uh, not just for a select few. So, um, really, the goal here is to improve the governance of the healthcare system uh, and to encourage, uh, you know, and empower the board to make evidence based decisions uh, and to be able to follow through with those decisions uh, toward the best health outcomes for Islanders. So, so that's, that's the summary. Um, what do we do? What do we do next? Happy I to answer talking, questions. I was, I was talking with the mute. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, uh, Trish, uh, for that. Uh, uh, before we go a little further, I want to introduce myself. I forgot about that. My name is Krisman Pereira, and I'm a volunteer with the Provincial Council, and will be your host tonight. Uh, so just want to let everyone know um, if you have any questions or clarifications, you can uh, type it in the text box or raise your hand and we would like to uh, answer any questions. Okay. Uh, well, we're waiting for questions. Sorry. Oh, do you have a question already, Chris? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. While, uh, uh, so uh, are there any aspects of this bill that you feel uh, are tricky or potential uh, controversial that the participants in this session might be able to help you with? Uh, yeah, no, that, that's a great question. I mean, in terms of what's a little bit tricky, um, uh, per, potentially, about this bill is that it does require, um, uh, you know, it will require some powers uh, to be, uh, for the minister to release, you know, some, some power uh, to back to the board uh, so that they can um, uh, function at their uh, full capacity. So um, that can be a challenging thing uh, sometimes. Uh, it also requires, you know, work on the part of, uh, of the department and the minister to build that relationship with the board and to work with them um, effectively and uh, and collaboratively, uh, without needing to have, uh, you know, absolute power um, over the decision making process. So, so that can be a bit tricky. Um, there are, you know, there's there's a, you know, the consultation draft is specifically at this point a repealing of the changes, but there may be. Some additional uh, changes that we could make to this act to strengthen it even further. So, um, if if anyone you know has had a chance to have a look at it and might have some suggestions, I would certainly be open to that um, and and welcome the, that conversation. I see Pauline Howard has has a hand up there on her screen. Um, yes, go ahead, Pauline. Uh, hi, Trish. Listen, just by way of background, could you refresh my memory on this? Who, um, when that change was made in 2018, who was the minister? Yeah, the minister was uh, Robert Mitchell at the time. So, um, so he was uh, the minister of health, and uh, he had just recently became become uh, the minister of health, I believe, at the time when these changes were brought forward. And uh, you know, the uh, at the time, I don't know if, if folks remember, but uh, after that, the legislation, uh, the amendments passed that shifted that power over to the minister, uh, the uh, the entire health PEI board at that time actually quit. 
Um, yes, because... Jamie, that's exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah. So the yeah. whole board quit, presumably as a protest against this legislation. Yes, uh, and you know, really, they, there was uh, several of the board members spoke out in the media um, uh, that it would not—they simply would not be able to uh, to do their job. That they felt that they needed to do, you know, as as a board to be able to effectively, um, you know, implement uh, the the on the ground operational uh, components of the healthcare system to just to make those decisions based on the evidence and actually move forward without. Uh, you know, the risk of, of uh, political interference. So really there was, you know, certainly strong opposition from, from the members of the board at that time. And, and uh, uh, you know, those concerns, I think looking, when I looked at, spent some time looking at, you know, what's happening in other jurisdictions, we're seeing really a shift uh, to, uh, to make sure that boards and similar types of structures. Now PEI, of course, is smaller than, than most other provinces, as we know. So uh, the health uh, system is structured uh, perhaps uh, you know differently here than than some other places, but generally when you have a board that is responsible for um, uh, administering uh, components of healthcare or the healthcare system, then they they need to have the power to do that, and that's really what we're seeing. Um, uh, I you know in other jurisdictions that I looked at and what what works effectively. Tris, do you recall what James Allward's position was when that amendment was made, if there was any discussion in the House? He would have been the critic for health care at that time. Do you recall what his yeah, no, was? Sorry, Pauline. No, that's a great question. And I did look back at the Hansard. And actually, um, James Aylward wasn't the, the, the critic for health at that time. He was the leader of the, of the opposition. Um, so the critic for health at that time was Sidney McEwen. Um, and when the uh, original amendments were tabled, um, he did have some questions about just a little bit about, you know, what, uh, you know, if, if there might be any issues with, with shifting that, uh, um, you know, dynamic, uh, but not a lot of criticism and generally was open, you know, to the idea at that time. Now, I will say once it passed and the entire board quit, um, there was a lot more uh, criticism brought forward from the opposition. Uh, uh, of course, Peter Bethan Baker, who was elected at the time, uh, did uh, express many of the concerns that I'm expressing tonight and that, um, you know, would uh, align, that this doesn't align with good governance and doesn't lead to uh, um, a, uh, the managing of the healthcare system in a way that is uh, most effective for uh, the best health outcomes based on evidence. So, um, you know, that, those were concerns that, that Peter did express at the time, but, uh, but James, I don't think he asked anything actually just because he wasn't the critic at that point. But by and large, the PCs shouldn't have any objection to this legislation. Uh, no, I, I I really hope not. I mean, I think it's a real opportunity for the the new Minister of Health, uh, Minister Hudson, to uh, to show that he understands the uh, important relationship, you know, working with the board and is, uh, you know, honestly brave enough and uh, willing to uh, to set aside his own power in for good governance and for the best outcomes for islanders. and um, I'm really quite hopeful that you know we, he will he will see that, and um, you know I will give him full credit in 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 um, you know it, hopefully be able to give him full credit for supporting this this change that is based on on good best practices uh, across the country. And Trish, how are the board selected or appointed? Is it through the um, what do they call that? The engaged PEI process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, technically, in the act, it is the minister that appoints the board. So there is there. You know, we're not taking away all of the um, everything, all of the power, all of the authority of the minister um, in regards to the board. Um, however, the engaged PEI process, it's my understanding, can be used uh, you know, to select board members. And in fact, in other acts, uh, the minister does technically have the power. Um, or the authority to uh, select the board. So that's, it's not unusual. Um, I will say it, it's a, another possible um, uh, amendment we could look at, if not this time around, perhaps in the future. Elected boards would, um, it, it's, it's not something we could put forward this sitting just because it is, it's complex and would take some time to, to make sure those amendments were um, written correctly and in such a way that it, it would work. 
uh, but it's it's something we can look at. Uh, you know, this isn't doesn't have to be the last time we we look at this. You know, really important act. Thank you very much, Trish. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, next, uh, yes, uh, I see Susan uh, has raised uh, her hand. Uh, Susan, you can go ahead after we can go ahead with the uh, chat. There are some questions as well. Thank you, Chris. Um, let me know if you can't hear me. My internet is terrible. I can uh, hear you. We can hear you. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a, a lot of questions as always, but f coming from what Pauline was saying, what do you expect the um, the argument against this would be? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's I, I, I have a really hard time imagining what a, you know, logical and reasonable argument uh, would be, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think uh, one of the concerns from a political standpoint, and which is exactly what we're trying to avoid, would be that uh, the minister wouldn't necessarily be able to uh, to step in and make changes if if uh, they the minister felt there was something a decision that might not be uh, appreciated by uh, all uh, voters. So if there might be a group that would be particularly offended that uh, the minister might not want to offend, um, I think uh, that would really be the only reason to want to keep this power um, is uh, is to for the minister to be able to step in, uh, you know, to uh, to make changes for political reasons. Um, you know, the board is made up of, you know, uh, seven to 11 members. Now, that's another actual, uh, change that uh, I'm proposing with this, uh, these amendments um, uh, to increase the capacity of the board um, from uh, about seven members right now to nine to 11 members. And um, that's, uh, you know, important for a few reasons. It increases, you know, representation. Um, and allows the board to actually, you know, work more effectively. They, with more, a few more members, they can actually have some subcommittees to really delve into um, key issues in the healthcare system. Um, uh, sorry, that, I got in a little tangent there. No, no, that's I, good. I that's forgot good. to mention um, that part. But yeah, I, I can't honestly think of a good logical argument uh, for why the yeah. minister or anybody. Neither could I. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, and following from your comment about the appointment of the board, mm -hmm. uh, a long standing concern I've had is the appointment of a lot of the people in leadership in the healthcare system to begin with, the directors mm -hmm. of departments and so on. And is that a separate legislation or would that be in the same legislation, you know, the appointment of directors of mental health and addictions, for example, or um, medical directors and that sort of thing? Um, yeah, no, that is a good question, Susan. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not completely sure. I will have to go back and double check that one. Um, but what I do know is that we've got, it's an interesting time right now in that uh, we've probably heard uh, about some of the, the major changes that uh, structural changes within health PEI. So we are at a point now where there seems to be uh, a willingness and appreciation that there are some significant issues um, within um, the structure of health PEI that need address. Um, you know, one of the things that I was quite uh, excited to hear Dr. Garnham uh, talk about uh, on the news would be the recognition of breaking down silos, right, within our healthcare system and how important that is. So um, I think that uh, this is a good time to uh, to move forward with, with changes that will have a, a positive impact. Um, as for exactly, I'm not sure that the answer to that question, Susan, but I will find that out for you. Thanks, thanks. It, it comes from talking to frontline people saying, mm -hmm. and people at Health PEI saying, you know, we have a lot of ideas, but there's this ceiling we bump into, you know, at the director level and at the deputy minister level, and it doesn't even mm -hmm. get to the minister. So, you know, those sort of concerns. Yeah. Thanks. Tricia. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. And the deputy minister, of course, I would be appointed by the premier, right? So that's a separate uh, thing. But yeah, no, the director question is good. I, I don't, I'm not sure. All right. All right. Uh, I have a uh, question here. Um, there are several here. I'm going, going to go with the order. 
So there is one form, Lindsay, she's asking, what are the proposed changes? Right, so I I don't know, I can share my screen. I think that those were, um, they are available either on the, the Green Party website or the uh, official opposition, or perhaps I can, I could share my screen. Um, essentially, it's um, uh, repealing, uh, you know, a few different sections of the act, uh, and then making a change to section four. Uh, and some of the language that is, you know, would be removed uh, would be things like, you know, that the minister may do anything that the minister considers advisable or that, um, you know, the health PEI board would be required to prepare and implement any health service plans or any other plans that the minister considers appropriate. So language like that is, is, is what we're trying to take out of that. So that there's not a, um, uh, an opportunity for the minister to step in um, at any stage and make any change, uh, you know, to a plan that is is based has been created based on you know evidence and best practice. And it looks like in the chat there, um, there's a, a link to to a summary uh, of the of the uh, the amendments, which I, I have here in front of me, but I'm not sure how to show those. Mm. I probably Jordan has the way. Chris, I just uh, I just made you a co-host as well, so you should be able to share your screen if you'd like to do that. Okay, so uh, so I have it in a in a PDF here. So can I just how do I do that? Mm. So you can Does go to the share no? share screen. Okay. Uh, screen. Thing at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Oh, okay. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> here we no go. Worries. Did that work? There we go. So these are the explanatory notes for oh, the. You um, can you guys see that? Yes. Did that work? Okay. So I mean, the changes are here. Um, you know, technically. So you know, we're repealing, uh, as it says here, sort of uh, several clauses, and uh, you can go to the main act and see what those are. But some of the best way to understand what that means is to go down to this part, which is the explanatory uh, notes. So it's. Again, it's repealing, um, you know, these are all the sections that were added in, in 2018, um, specifically to uh, add additional powers uh, to the minister and remove power from the board. Uh, and then that section four is the changes of the board composition that I just mentioned. So um, ensuring that there's a, you know, increasing the number of the board members again, which they were decreased in, in 2018. Um, one change I'll highlight that uh, is not in this consultation draft that uh, already within, you know, uh, speaking with, with health experts uh, and, uh, you know, what some of the possible concerns might be with these amendments. Uh, we did remove uh, in, um, in repealing all of the changes from 2018, there was one addition that uh, stipulated that there would be one member from uh, Eastern PEI and one from Western PEI, basically. And, um, you know, that was taken out at, when we took out everything, but we re I realized, you know, that I think, you know, after consulting that that is actually a really important thing to have um, so that we continue to, to ensure that there is, um, you know, uh, representation from rural PEI and particularly Eastern and Western PEI. So that's not in this current draft, but uh, it will be in the draft um, that we table in the legislature. So we're still, we're still open to making a few tweaks for sure. All right, thank you. So there is yeah. another question from uh, uh, Wayman Moss. He is asking, in the past, uh, it was criticized the administration was top heavy, too many administrators and not enough frontline workers. Will your bill do anything to address this? Um, so yes, yeah, so, okay, so let me take a look at the um, too many administrators and not enough frontline workers. Well, so what it will do is allow the board to make decisions for the best you know, health outcomes. And clearly one of the things we're seeing is that we need more frontline workers. So um, you know, if we are making good evidence-based decisions, which uh, you know, a board is, is directed, that is their mandate to do, then um, you know, decisions should be made to increase and improve our frontline healthcare services. Uh, will these changes directly do that? They, no, um, 
but there's that's not really something we can mandate in in legislation. Uh, it is again though about good governments and evidence based decisions and uh, we do we have issues around recruitment and retention and we need to get innovative about how we're going to solve that. And uh, that is a, a really important discussion and. Um, our caucus has proposed well i've you know put forward with through our caucus uh, some suggestions uh toward uh, in the operational budget that uh you know when we table or when we present uh the recommendations that we gave to government which we will be doing in full um you'll see some ideas that we've put forward to uh, to hopefully um you know encourage uh, and support recruitment and retention of doctors yes but also you know all of the healthcare professionals that we need um, it won't be addressed with this particular legislation. This isn't going to solve all the problems, but it is one critical piece of the puzzle to make sure that our decisions are based on, you know, best practices and evidence. Perfect. Uh, there's another question from Pauline. Uh, uh, she's asking whether you'll be talking to the health minister before the bill is put on the floor. Yeah, that's a great question, Pauline, and so important, and not just to the health minister, right, because really, at the end of the day, you know, it is the legislature that decides um, about this bill. So, you know, I really would like the health minister to support this, uh, because it is, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's good governance, and it, it will improve outcomes. Uh, however, I'll be talking to the health minister, as well as, you know, every other minister and the MLAs to, uh, to, to have a conversation and see, you know, what their, what their thoughts are, and, uh, and hopefully uh, be able to address any concerns. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, next we'll go with Jordan. I see that Jordan has raised his hand. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, hi, Trish. So uh, I, I have a little bit of a, a two-part question. Okay. So I guess the first the first part of the question is, uh, it strikes me that this um, this issue is a lot about where where is the line between you know, politics and and sort of, you know, elected politicians who are accountable to their electorate, you know, wanting to to do things in a certain way, maybe that they feel that they've been given a mandate to do versus, uh, versus, versus you know, the experts, like you say, or, you know, the board sort of taking responsibility and, and governing something like the healthcare system. So I'm wondering if you can say a little bit about where, what role do you think that politics should play or should not play, uh, however you want to frame that, in something like the healthcare system. And I'm also wondering, the second part of that is, is whether you think that this is a, uh, a line that's particularly important to draw in the healthcare system, uh, you know, as opposed to maybe, you know, our education system or other ministries, mm -hmm. um, or is there a reason why, why this is an issue that's rearing its head in, in healthcare in particular? Yeah, so those are great questions, Jordan. Thank you. So, um, you know, what I'll start with your first question. So, what role do I think that you know politics and politicians should play, um, you know, in our healthcare system? And uh, it really um, is. It's outlined in what's in in the in the um, in the act, and it will still be in the act even after these amendments uh, are, you know, if they go through. Um, it's. It's about the overall vision and goals of, you know, what is it that we want our healthcare system to achieve? What is what is it that, um, you know, we uh, as islanders want, you know, for healthcare? And uh, that, you know, when when someone votes for a politician or votes for a political party, it's really about that overall vision of what it is that they want, you know, for this island and for islanders. So at the highest level, that is, you know, definitely a role. Of, of the minister to set that, you know, that overarching agenda. And the, um, the overall um, uh, uh, provincial plan, sorry, not provincial plan, the overall plan for, um, I'm looking for the language of it here, uh, for the uh, direction of, sorry, the provincial health plan, that's, that's it, which is in the act, the, it is the minister's responsibility to create the provincial health plan which is that overarching vision as well every three years uh, a strategic plan is created that is you know really does break that down a little bit more as to what are the goals and how you know are we going to measure those goals um, that strategic plan is created by the board but also approved by the minister so we are not really we're not it's not the board is, has all of the power what what we're suggesting though or what i'm suggesting in these amendments 
is that when it comes down to the actual like day-to-day -day operational, how do we how do we actualize that plan? How do we actualize that vision? How do we um, make uh, you know to in make it a reality? Uh, you know that's the piece that you know you need to listen to the experts. You need to listen to the evidence. You need to look at best practices and make evidence-based decisions that will lead to the health outcomes that you are working toward in that that larger vision. So that's the line. That's where you know, the vision needs to be actualized on the ground uh, and we can't have, um, you know, it's not appropriate to have a politician step in at that stage and uh, derail, you know, good evidence-based uh, planning and uh, process that will, uh, that is, is working toward those goals. Does that, hopefully that was clear enough. I'm not sure. But. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> You had a second part to your question, and I wrote that. Yeah, down. so that was whether you think that the healthcare system is is particularly mm -hmm. important to draw that line, or if it differs in in this respect from other ministries, perhaps. It's that is such an interesting question, and you know, honestly, uh, Jordan, I uh, you know, as the healthcare critic, it's it's been a. Uh, I've learned so much, honestly, in the past two years. Uh, you know, I can honestly say that looking back. Uh, um, as we have, uh, you know, to the first um, throne speech and, and when that happened and, you know, as you know, we've been asked both times, the first time and the second time to, uh, you know, contribute uh, ideas, things that we as, a, as a, a Green Caucus would like to see in the throne speech and uh, just looking at, you know, the things that I, I knew to put forward this time because of all I've learned in, in healthcare, it is such a huge portfolio and is so complex and so important uh, for for all of our, our well-beings, uh, you know, it is, it's, it's complex. So, um, you know, to be able to see the, the uh, to have a vision about what, uh, what we would like to, to have uh, accessible for Islanders to achieve the best health outcomes is, is, uh, is, is something that it takes work, it takes uh, effort to um, really engage with that process. Um, but as much as I've done, and I work, I work, I work really hard on this. I read, I, you know, I engage with experts across the country on so many issues. I try to do my best. I'm not, I'm not an expert. I'm a politician who is, you know, trying to understand very complex issues. At the end of the day, particularly in healthcare, we really need the, those experts to be empowered to make the decisions uh, based on evidence in collaboration with their minister, right? And this is the piece, right? It's, it's, it's not one or the other. It's, you know, working together. Um, and when you have a power dynamic where the minister has has all of the power, then that's not working together. So it really, you know, it's going to require some bravery uh, for for this government to recognize that if we really want to get to the best health outcomes for Islanders, then it's going to take uh, giving up a little bit of that power to make sure that we are utilizing the board in the most effective way uh, to make decisions for the best health outcomes of Islanders. And uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping that that uh, that they will be supportive. Hey, thank you for that. That is great. Uh, so we'll now open for feedback and suggestions, uh, as well as any other questions from the floor. Uh, does anyone have anything to say? Uh, I uh, have a question. And yeah, go ahead. Hey guys, this is Omer. Um, quick question. Um, do you think if we um, appoint a health minister that is uh, extremely qualified for the position, would you still feel the need to uh, repeal those bills and, and give more power to the, uh, to the um, seven or 11 people that you were mentioning? Yeah, so thank you so much for that question. Um, I think when we are making changes to legislation, it's it's not just for, you know, for this particular minister or for today. It is, you know, for today and for the future. So we don't know, you know, what, what government will look like in the future, who the health minister will be and what experience, you know, she or he or they may have, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's, we can't, I, that would be the ideal, of course, right? If you uh, right. had a, um, a health minister who had in-depth knowledge uh, in uh, areas of healthcare, particularly healthcare system <laughs> governance, that would be amazing. Um, it's, it's not particularly likely that that would happen, uh, to be honest, um, but uh, certainly I would hope that, 
you know, uh, it would be great to have to have that, uh, but I don't think we can count on it. And uh, certainly, um, there's every reason to think that uh, that you know may not be the case. So this is yeah. really, but if you had that, you know, that minister would be able to work effectively with the board, right? That this doesn't change yeah. that. Um, yeah. And yeah, great. I, I really agree with you when you said that we can't count on it. So as a contingency plan, maybe we should uh, put a, a fourth bill or a third bill, for example, that really clearly outlines the qualifications of a health minister. It's it's such an interesting, uh, you know, reality of, of politics, right? Because you know, you and uh, anybody can run, which is a beautiful, wonderful thing. And and you know, the the people elect their you know their elected officials, and that's wonderful. Um, in the end, you know, you the, who will have the expertise to to take on which portfolio, you know, which party will form government, and and how that all you know shakes out. It's uh, you know we can't ever guarantee that there will be, I mean, right now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing, and this is no, no criticism to the current uh, members of uh, the governing party, but I don't know that anybody would have the qualifications that you are describing, the ideal health minister, right. um, and we can't change that, right, because the, the, these mm -hmm. are the, uh, the folks who are elected, and, you know, that's, that, those are the, you know, people that were um, chosen by uh, their constituents, so, yeah, Perfect. it's, it's an interesting dynamic answer. though. Yeah, isn't it? Because, you know, when you think about how much honestly, and I can't, uh, we do a search after of this uh, this um, discussion and search the number of times that the word power comes up, it probably came up a lot, um, but it, yeah. it's quite shocking how much power ministers actually have. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure that um, everybody fully realizes that uh, and the mm -hmm. impact that, you know, politics really have on our, our day-to-day lives. Um, Overall, as a you know, because this is a Green Party event, I can talk about that. But I think that that's uh, you know something that uh, you know if if uh, if we can if people could under if people knew that uh, and were empowered to to realize how much power they have to choose um, elected officials that will really uh, work you know for them and for the best interests of all Islanders. Well, you know that would be great. Yeah, thanks so much for that answer. Thank you. I have all a question. Right, uh... Uh, yeah, Toby, I was just about to go to your question <laughs> in <Okay>. the chat. <laughs> um, how long, Trish, and maybe you're not aware of this, how long has the board system been in place prior to the change in 2018? Yeah, and I don't know the exact length of time. I, I believe it was nine years. Uh, it had been in place for nine years before uh, the changes in 2018. So a significant amount of time. I, I, I'd have to, I'm, I could be wrong. I would double check that, but I believe that's, that's the case. So a while, not, it's not the, we've had different health systems. We have different, yeah. it's not been forever, but yeah. a while. Yeah. So, and do you know the reason in why they brought around that change in 2018? Uh, well, um, I don't know uh, for certain. I mean, you know, when it was presented on the floor, the, the, uh, it was uh, the minister at the time, Robert Mitchell, uh, had uh, essentially, um, you know, proposed that this was a uh, a better way to uh, to um, to make sure that the minister had the authority to make changes if needed. Um, I don't know, you know, exactly why the if needed part when we should be making decisions based on on evidence. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know. There wasn't a, a lot of, of discussion at the time, as uh, to be honest. If, you know, you can go back to Hansard and have a look at it. And uh, you know, uh, Peter Biden Baker brought yeah. forward some great. I, yeah, I but, remember but, watching uh, it, um, legislature on on the computer whenever that was brought up, and the news articles about the mass yeah. resignations. And I'm just wondering if I I really don't see where there would be a lot of opposition to this bill, mm -hmm. you know, whenever they're talking about collaboration and because that's one of their catchwords, right, is collaboration and reserting the main power back to the board is collaboration with those nine, seven, nine, eleven people mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, asking for, you know, maybe the minister's assistance now and then as a tiebreaker or whatever your recommendation would be. 
So I, I can't see where there would be, but then again, we don't know, right? <laughs> Yeah. And at the end of the day, no, thank you for that, Toby. I mean, I, uh, it is, this is, this is based on good governance. It, I, I do believe after, you know, looking at different jurisdictions and, and, uh, you know, considering, uh, um, you know, what impacts this could have and you know, talking with experts here, you know, in, within our own healthcare system, that uh, making these changes was really the, the going to result in the best health outcome for Islanders, to be honest. So, um, you know, I'm bringing it forward because I think it's the right thing to do. I, I don't know. I, I do hope it passes. I really do. But it, I, I, I have to I have to try to do, you know, what's right. That, and and kind of bouncing off of what Susan was saying, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, my background is in nursing and speaking with, you know, your nursing friends, um, whenever they don't feel like they're being heard, which mm -hmm. tends to be the system that's in place right now, you, you, you're getting a lot of frustration and a lot of voices that feel they are not being heard. So the, the system you're wanting to put in place, it seems to me like, you know, you wouldn't have just one individual you would go to, you would have a board that you would be able to submit concerns to or ideas to. So you wouldn't just be submitting it to one individual, you would be submitting it to the rent, we'll say the round table. Um, so there's many voices that would be bouncing that idea or that concern around too. So yeah. I, I very much, I like the idea. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely right. Yes. It, it, it's not, it doesn't all come down to just the one person, the one, the minister. Um, uh, it, it is, uh, you know, there is a board that, that, that uh, you know, can, uh, will be empowered to to make uh, good decisions and but i will say again this this won't solve all of the problems in our healthcare yeah. system that what you described toby is is absolutely critical that you know right now uh frontline healthcare providers particularly our nurses i hear from them all the time um do not feel listened to they do not feel like they are able to uh um, to innovate and to uh, to really you know that they're they're really valued uh, we have a lot of work to do there um, uh, this won't, this won't change that directly, but it's, it's definitely one step to a better system and, uh, and, but there's more work to do. Yeah. Lots. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you, uh, Trisha. What caused you to, uh, shift focus to, from a simple, uh, accountability framework uh, to the broader health system. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yes, some of you might have noticed that the original, uh, um, you know, when we put out the information about this event, um, one of the things that was on there was uh, that this legislation would um, require an accountability framework uh, to be created, which was a much smaller change. Um, but when we really delved into it, uh, we realized that that, you know, while that was a critical component of what needed to happen, and in fact, when the changes were made in 2018, um, uh, on the floor, Robert Mitchell uh, promised that um, uh, you know that there would be an accountability framework that would clearly outline the responsibilities of both the board and the minister created right away. It still doesn't it still doesn't exist. It hasn't been created. Um, uh, I've I've been told there's been work toward it very recently. Um, we have had a change in the leadership of the board, um, you know, uh, late in uh, 2020. Um, and, uh, you know, they've taken on, um, you know, uh, advocated for this to happen. I know that that's true. Um, so, uh, you know, there has been some progress there. But when, after delving into it further, um, it just became clear that that was, you know, that simple change is, is simply, it's not enough. It's not going to address um, this, this power imbalance that exists that is simply not going to allow the board to function uh, to its full ability uh, and to allow it to make those, those key evidence-based decisions to operationalize that strategic plan. Um, so none of that was going to change with that small amendment. So at the end of the day, we decided, you know what, we, I need to put forward the best uh, legislation I can um, based on, you know, best practices in, in good governance. And and it needs to be able to stand behind that. Uh, so while uh, this is a bigger change and it, it, it may be more challenging to pass, uh, it is it's the right thing to do. And uh, 
I'm I'm hopeful that uh, you know we can um, have a good conversation about it and and that this will pass because there's you know when it comes down to it there's you know there is no good logical ar argument uh, uh, in my mind against it uh, other than the desire to hold on to that ability for political interference. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, so we have uh, we have some more time here. Anyone else have any other questions uh, or suggestions for this bill? Okay. I think Jordan, do you have your hand up there? Okay, Jordan Excuse has me. hand. <laughs> Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, I thought since you since you touched on the topic of that accountability framework, I'm wondering if mm -hmm. you could tell us a little bit about what that would look like and what it would mm -hmm. accomplish. Yeah, so essentially, you know, it would outline uh, very clearly, you know, what the roles and responsibilities are of both the board and uh, the department and the minister. So that is, it's laid out in the act, but it would be, you know, in further detail, I guess, of how that would look and who's responsible for what. It's for the sake of the board and, and the minister, but also for the public to really have a better understanding of, you know, who is responsible for what. I mean, um, the... The fact that we have, you know, health PEI as separate from the department, um, as a crown corporation with a board, but yet the minister still has final authority over, you know, all of the decisions is a con it's confusing uh, for folks, uh, understandably. So the idea of uh, that's another benefit of an accountability framework, um, and you know, it's still something that it will you know, be in this act that the they should create an accountability framework that outlines those roles. It will just be. The roles will look a little different because there's going to be that shift uh, allowing the board to function as a proper board. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question from Toby. Uh, do you know when you will be bringing it to the floor and how are we able to help? No, thank you, Toby. I really appreciate that question. Um, you know, go ahead and, and email your, uh, you know, MLAs or your, you know, rep, the minister, whoever, you know, is your representative, whether they're, you know, in government or not, uh, because again, in the legislature, every MLA uh, gets a vote. And, you know, of course, we, as you know, we are in a majority government situation just barely right now, um, but uh, every every MLA can vote independently, uh, just based on views, quite honestly. So, uh, you know, go ahead and, and, uh, and, and let them know that this matters to you. I mean, the, one of the tricky things about this is that, you know, good governance is not uh, something that is generally like something that people get excited about in the public. Um, it's, it's not something we talk about a lot, um, but really the outcomes down the line uh, can be significant um, for uh, the, the functioning of our healthcare system and to the, you know, making sure we have the most uh, uh, effective access to services. I mean, really, um, you know, the impacts can be significant, but it, it's not something that's really, I, I guess, a headline grabber, but that's not, you know, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do, not because it's, it's, uh, you know, gonna get a lot of media or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, maybe it will, who knows. And any of you want to have the contact information of the MLAs, uh, Jordan has say, uh, shared the link in the chat box where you can find all the information over there. Thank you, Jordan, for that. Yeah, um, and so, if anybody, can I just add quickly, if anybody is, you know, yeah, like yeah. Hasn't, hasn't, you know, emailed or contacted their MLA before in this sort of way, like, please, you know, I encourage you to reach out to, probably to Jordan would be a good resource actually in, in how to do that or to contact me if you have any questions about how we could, how you could frame it, but, you know, um, don't hesitate to reach out if, if you're nervous about that. And, and there's, still, there's always someone who can support you through that. So, yeah, just wanted to say that. Okay. So we have, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, there's another question. Uh, 
uh, would you recommend uh, VCC to the Minister of Health along with our MLA? Yes, the, there's you know certainly no harm in that. Uh, yeah, good idea. Is that from, that's Toby? Good idea, Toby. Yes, yeah. please do. And you know, um, yeah, sure. The the more people, the merrier, I guess. Yeah, go for it. Send it <laughs> along to the minister because you know I do expect you know, you would expect that there would be um, you know the that uh, members of of the of the BC caucus may go to their health minister to ask uh, his advice or to the premier. You know, uh, so always good to to to, you know, yeah. Why not? Go ahead. That's that's all I'll say on that. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost time to go, uh, and. Um, if we're almost done, I have uh, uh, just one more thing I wanted to say, Chris, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I just, first of all, again, I want to thank, you know, Chris, you and Jordan and, you know, everyone and Maria for, you know, organizing this event and all of the other um, outside the rail events. I think it's a great idea. Um, uh, and I want to just let everybody else here know that um, obviously, uh, you know, health, as I've said, is, it's a complex portfolio. There's a lot of areas, uh, you know, to, to talk about. So if you do have an interest in, in other areas of this portfolio, like reach out to, you know, to Jordan and, um, you know, we can, we can always organize future events uh, around different topics. Uh, it doesn't have to be legislation. I mean, this is, uh, you know, the health portfolio, it's not all the problems are not going to be solved through legislation. Um, sometimes it's about advocating and bringing forward concerns and, uh, and challenging, um, you know, asking good questions in the legislature and, uh, you know, listening to, uh, to Islanders, to constituents uh, about their experiences and what they, what they believe or what they've seen needs to change. That's one of the best ways uh, for me to understand what's really going on. So I just want to throw that out there. I'm absolutely open to future um, uh, events like this and uh, if you have ideas for topics you'd like to discuss you know share it with Jordan is that okay Jordan sorry I'm just putting oh absolutely okay yeah so send, I just send put my email message. address in the uh, chat there perfect and uh, you're know, happy to have those discussions and um, just wanted to ask you Trisha about the bill uh, if there is any suggestions or concerns uh, uh, when would be the deadline that they can uh, email you? Yes, so we did have, so on the official opposition uh, website, you can pr um, submit feedback and I can't remember the date. Does anybody have that? Uh, it was one week from yesterday, I believe. So there is a date there and I just- I February don't 18th is what you've got in your piece there. Yes. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. So February 18th, and that's just so we have, you know, a little bit of time. Um, there's uh, obviously a lot of really um, important and uh, uh, amazing legislation coming forward from all uh, several of the Green uh, Caucus members uh, this sitting. So I don't know at which order this will come forward. And, um, you know, but, uh, you know, please you know, send in those ideas and I'd love to have a look at them. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trish. Uh, uh, if there is, uh, hopefully everyone uh, and even Trish uh, found this session really helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, as she mentioned, if you, anyone has any suggestions, please uh, reach out to your MLAs, reach out to her and uh, get the role going. And um, so if there is and no more questions, I would like to, adjourn the session. Uh, thank you very much for participating on our event and helping uh, Trish to uh, get this bill. Uh, and hopefully everything will be uh, perfect and the bill will pass, fingers crossed. And uh, thank you very much everyone and hope to see you at the next session. Thanks, everyone. And Thanks so night. much. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.